Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a and welcome to the Dork Forest. I'm Jackie Cation. You know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com. If you like a determiner, FamilyPetAncestry.com, which I just renewed because it's funny. Let's do the credits. You just heard the song that Mike Rickberg composed and sang with his wife, Sarah Cohen. He will sing his words to the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio and Vilmos does JackieCation.com, the website. DorkForest.com has available essentially player notes and the YouTube version of the show. You can listen to the show on iTunes and Stitcher and all the things, but you can also listen to it on YouTube or on dorkforest.com. JackieCation.com has all my stand-up comedy information and the merch for Dork Forest. You can get t-shirts, you can get CDs, you uh, can get pins that say Spooky Reading Girl or Meat Shield, but they are not available on the website. You have to email me, Jackie at JackieCation.com. There's also the calendar of my stand-up comedy to find out where I'm playing near you. If I'm not playing near you, talk to your local comedy club and request me. What the heck? There are also videos of my stand-up. You can watch my Conan. You can watch clips from my DVD and links to my other podcast, The Jackie and Lori Show on Nerdist, which is just about stand-up comedy. Anyway, there is also a donation button on both JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. It's a PayPal button. Uh, all it is is a way to donate to support the show. You can do that by using the Amazon banner, which is just a link to get you to Amazon, which uh, supports the show. You just order like normal. It doesn't cost you extra. And you can use the donation button just to donate. If you don't like PayPal, you can Venmo me, Jackie at JackieCation.com. There is also uh, premium episodes at thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. And those cost $2 a piece because they're live episodes and they cost me some money to put up. So if you've run through all the episodes, you can go to Bandcamp and get like 10 more. What the heck? So much info. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Thanks for supporting the show. Let's get into it. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm in my living room. You haven't been on the show in forever, Greg Barrett. I think you had just gotten the, your, this place. Wasn't Possibly you, I think 2000. You, yeah. Well, we got moved it in looks 2004. Great, by the way. Yeah, we moved some of the boxes. Exactly. Here. We moved some of the boxes. We painted that wall. Oh, wow. That's pretty Man, much all we've that. done. That's, That's what beautiful. they call an accent wall. <laughs> It's, it's real nice there. Is this is this place feng shui? Is that the right color for that place? It's uh, it is. I believe. Okay, I did get it feng shui. Yeah. Uh, Susie Soro, remember Susie Soro? Yeah, Stand-up yes, comic? of course. Yeah, she was doing feng shui for a while. Wow, <laughs> she came over to the house, let me in on my. Uh, she had a compass and everything. Doors pointed the right way and everything. Well, we didn't move. We weren't going to move the door, so I, we, I didn't you. ask. Somebody looked at the floor plan for the house I'm living in right now, and eventually they just threw their pen down and went, "I don't even know how you make this work. It's all wrong." Wow. I mean, we're just all twisted in the wrong place. Well, you're for, pointed in yeah, the... Or bathrooms are in the... You know, like there's just no... Is your timing... Are you sleeping there? Yeah, that's where I sleep. Well, can you move your bed? I can't. I. Uh, that, that's really no. the only place where that's then where the dressers... Goes. Yeah. Everything fits. Yeah. And then I went, you know, my life's going well enough. I mean, yes, sure. We could all use it would a be little... No, I just was hoping for some input. And if it was easy to fix, I could have fixed it. And that's yeah. exactly what we did. At one point, uh, Andy Ashcraft uh, said to Susie Soro, no... We're keeping that, and uh, and I don't blame him. I, I mean, the, <laughs> first she was off, like, "He's my hero." Uh, he, he, she's a big fan. Yeah, I don't know if you know this about things. We're just going to dork out. Let me just tell people yeah. first of all. I'm talking to Greg Barron, yes. stand-up comic writer, uh, very funny human. Uh, obviously, uh, you've probably heard of him. It's at Gregory Barron on Twitter. Mm-hmm. It's at it's Gregors on on Instagram. Instagram because yeah. your last name is hard to spell and it I'm is going to too spell difficult. it. Now. Yeah. B E H R E N D T. Yeah. It'll be in the notes you guys. Yeah. Okay, now. Uh according to Feng Shui, bookcases should all have doors on them. Yeah. Uh, okay, so already. Already we're all screwed. It's yeah. uh, it's untidy. There's no way. And none of our bookcases do because we aren't fucking Rockefeller. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what. Right. But there's no sliding. I also don't have a, my own library. which I I, I, I've like. not seen very many bookcase, uh, 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 like doored bookcases. I don't know who's anyone that's keeping their books behind something. Like a glass door. The whole point of books is these are accomplishments. This is stuff that I've done. 
Here's a little bit about me that I'm showing you. These right. will probably sit here till we move. Right. I, I actually just went through a lot of the books in this room because I did a cleaning episode, an episode with a woman who likes to clean. And so I spent six hours cleaning this room. It doesn't look like it now. Right. But uh, just imagine what it looked like previously. Yeah. What I did was I emptied all of these bookcases. And I dusted right. underneath those books, which I don't think had been done. Do you read a book much anymore? Or do I you, totally do you do read it, books. Um, and you don't do it on that computer or in the... Uh, uh, no, I can only reread on Kindle. Uh, I got to read the first time on a hardcover. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because I'm 100. But I was born 100, no. and that's the way it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- yeah. our lives are complete. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I realize like, how few books have come into our house in the last... Uh, other than the ones we write, that very few books have come into our house. We went over to a friend's house. The people that are very nice and very well... They're lovely humans. They had a little room off of their bedroom that they said it was like like a little library. It had a bunch of bookcases built in. We ripped those out and we put in an elliptical. And Andy and I just paused and just nodded politely yeah. because um, it's their space. It turns out, yeah, and they can read on the elliptical. Yeah, right. Probably. They the thing. Yeah, they or might someone even... reads to them. A lot of people listen now. They get, they got an audible. Maybe they have a nice audible. That, Audible's that, great. That's my new my new advertiser. Plus, I'm also writing a book for Audible, and I've done some voiceover work for My Audible. My new album comes out on Audible. Your new album comes out on Audible. People, you should know that Greg Barrett has written several books, and you have a podcast, which we, we've been trying to get me to do. Yes, we have. What oh is gosh, it called? Yes. It is called Maybe It's You. Maybe It's You, because yep. you wrote the funny book. Uh, yeah, that's uh, right. That's right. We wrote, yeah. yeah. Uh, n- the name of the book is It Might Not Be You. Wait a minute. Uh, what no. the fuck? Uh, <laughs> I read it. I he, had He's it. just not that into you. He's just not that into yeah, you. Yeah. It was huge. It, was it actually very large. derailed your career for several years. It did years. take my career in a direction I was not uh, intending it's on going. Beautiful. I, yeah, sure. It's very beautiful. Hard to find your way back, though. It's just a one-way. It was a, a one-way, one-way trip. Way. A one-way like, trip to like, uh, well, thanks. Uh, <laughs> can I get a ride back? Oh, no. You'll have no. to walk back. So I'm just now arriving back it's, at comedy. Right, exactly. It's a left on Wilshire at 449. Is that okay? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't do that. It's been, it's long enough that when people say he wrote, uh, he's just not that into you, and they go, I don't, uh, I don't know. Oh, what that is. Uh, oh. Uh, is that a movie? Uh, uh, I think I, uh, maybe, you know, but, okay. I, and I think, yeah, but still. Yeah. It's, uh, I had, um, uh, God damn it. I've forgotten her name. But no no rangers are surprised because uh, names are uh, they're like water. Uh, they go right through me. Oh, man. So it is the woman who wrote September. And oh, she yeah. wrote Boogie Boogie. Uh, Boogie. Uh, uh, Allie Willis? Yeah. Allie Willis. Oh, so, the, oh, oh, the woman who wrote the songs. The yeah. songwriter. Yeah, oh, the songwriter. He, oh, she's incredible. Yeah, she she's wrote the, amazing. She, won, she wrote the Friends theme. She wrote the Friends. Yeah. And I mentioned the Friends theme to her. And she said, oh, I didn't like what they what they did there. And I said, did you, did you cry to the bank every day? What happened? They yeah. Play, they play that thing three times a day. She said, it wasn't that great of a deal. And I was like, mm, even so. Even Still. so, giant bag of money as a doorstop. Yeah. I hope you bought land. But those, I mean, her like when she tells you she did Earth, Wind, and Fire songs, you're like, I, you need to have done nothing more. Those are credible, great songs. Those that, are like, amazing t- songs. Like, they're timeless. Like, it's just, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. wait, are we recording? We are. Good for me. Oh, man. I, anyway, so Maybe It's You is your podcast. Yes. And uh, we're... I just I just want to get into the into your dorkdom, which has come out and felt kind of embarrassing to you, but yes. or something or compelling in some way, shape or form. When I did this show before, I, I can't even remember what it was, but I remember thinking, man, I'm not a very good fan of things. Right. I start, I get excited, and then I quit. Right? I had a you know, I had a great relationship with Marvel Comics as a young kid, but then sure. I just and the shift was that the that where I was headed usually was somewhere where girls were. Okay. And my first obsession was football. I wanted to play Until football. what, you were like 11? Uh, I went I all the way to about junior year in high school. I played football through high school and I liked, loved it and I went to it. But I really, my, my motives were always the same. It was like, if somebody sees me playing quarterback, then they're going to want to kiss me. Oh, there you go. And I, so I said to someone, I go, look, to be honest, the one thing I know a lot about, the one thing I thought about my whole life, the one thing I sort of ended up doing was I was obsessed with women. And I think to a bigger extent, the feminine. Okay. Just always, just always. Right. And we are in troubled times. Troubled times. Troubled times. (laughs) So So, hard. So it is weird to think, because the thing is, is like, I've always loved men. And right. I have four brothers and a dad, and my sister yes. is. We spent all of our time. They got all the attention. They got. They got. Nobody ever questioned their dreams or desires. Luckily, my father 
um, didn't care about any of us. So he was like, well, you should do that then. Uh, it was very, it was very supportive right. in a very sort of offhand kind of, no, you, you, you should, li-. Uh, I remember distinctly, he said, well, you should live your dreams. Cause I'm going to make funny either way. See, I, the thing I, I love about it, one of the things I was going to say to you, and that's funny that you said that about your, yeah, because while your, your father and per your stand up, uh, has his failings, right? Uh, it, he is a flawed a, man. At the end, there's a, there's a, a certain amount of, um, well, there's, there's respect. There's also, um, uh, you seem a little bit delighted by him, even in his like the way you retell his story is is uh, 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 he's a he's a person. Yeah, he's a person like anybody else. But there's <laughs> there's some very male <laughs> things about him that I really appreciate. And and the last time I saw you, you talked about his how you would ask a woman out his his idea about oh, what's going right, on now, right. which I and which is what I've always liked about it's your stand up sales technique. Yeah, it's just sales technique. But it also and- has a like it's it has the you can't be a salesman and not understand the right and wrong and people you really have to have even right. if it's manipulative you have to have some sense of this will make this person uncomfortable and so i can't do it like this no no right no you uh, the thing the the beauty of how my father does interact with women is that he has like i i have the bit about how i'm the definition of flirting right. is an interaction with another person wherein you make the other person feel good about themselves. That a hundred percent. Which is a weird I when I read that, it blew my fucking mind. Because <laughs> I was like, well I've never done that. Not on purpose. Except for my dad said, Yeah, you have every time you sell something to somebody, you're making them feel good about themselves for buying it. So if the thing you're selling is you, then that's what you you're like, well first of all uh, you what you do when you when when you hit on a woman is you make them feel good about themselves. You're like, oh, you seem like a good looking person. I wonder if you would like me, because uh, I'm I'm kind of compelled to talk to you because of how sort of attractive you are. Right. And I don't, I, you know what, and and then the other thing is is you make your pitch and then you step away. I mean, the thing about my dad is that it's a numbers game. That absolutely everything. It's so funny because, you know, then, then all of a sudden people go, well, then you're selling, you know, like there, it's hard to distinguish the disingenuous from, you know, right. We, I, I always go, man, we were just animals. We're just right. animals with clothes, like with shirts on. Like we, we have, you know, before I think sometimes my experience as a cisgender male is that, you know, I just am attracted uh, to somebody. Right. Uh, and my tastes are all over the place. But if I was attracted to somebody, I would come up and find some way to say, First off, I'm over there, and you wouldn't know me unless I came over, and I'm right. going to say something funny or nice, and then I'm going to leave because right. I don't want you – like I want you to have the option of going, never speak to me again. But also, right. maybe I piqued your interest, and if you look back my way – Well, that's it. I mean, right? that, that's where – and that is the difference between someone who is manipulative – and it's not that my father doesn't want to date absolutely every woman in front of him. He does. It's just that he also knows he's not going to get to. And the best bet is to initiate contact and then let let it play out. And if it plays out in his favor, it's a win for him. But if it doesn't, <laughs> then he's like, well, I gave it a shot. Uh, there's another girl over there. Look and at that. You also treated yourself to the thrill of contact with any person. <laughs> right. Hey, there's like, there's, like, there's yeah. human interaction. Yeah. I mean, look that, at it. That is truly what he loves, I think. Oh, my God. It, me, too. And I loved I mean, look, you can do that with a same-sex bartender. Uh, right. Like, as long as you, you make somebody laugh and they feel good, you go, man, I'm fucking great. Look, I, I made that guy laugh. Yeah. Um, uh, and so – and because you're – it's also a skill that you might have of being able to, like – make people feel good about themselves without making it feel like now are we best friends? Cause I said that thing. Right. Right. I mean, that's the other thing is, is my, when my father would describe being in the Marines, he said, I loved being in the Marines. I was a terrible Marine. There was no reason for me to be there. And, but those guys were super cool. And I was like, I'm hanging out with these guys and they loved me because I knew how cool they were. That's so funny. That's I have to tell you. I, I that's the second time I've heard uh, the very same story about the military. Okay. From um, and this friend of mine that told me he's like very lives in San Francisco. Like he goes, but I was in the military, and you know, you hung out with those guys, and you felt like wow, you were really a part of something. Yeah. 
big, which for me too is sort of part of that. There are that's that interaction groups also that 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 um but uh, by, by association build up whatever perception you want the world to have of you, especially masculine groups. When I grew up, that idea of I'm playing football, so I've confirmed my masculinity. Okay. Even though I'm not good at it, I don't like being hit. I don't <laughs> like when, when guys talk negatively about women. I really have blanched at that for whatever reason, always. Like, it's not that I am above being, you know, a comedian or saying something dirty or stupid. For the most part, though, I'm like, that feels angry or I, it just doesn't. I feel like you don't know. Do you, that was my thing when I was a kid. I was so obsessed with women. Mm hmm. But just. Before you, I even knew what to call it. I just wanted to be around all my girl cousins. I just wanted to be where I went over to my, I made a friend next door because I wanted to see his sister's room. Okay. I wanted to go in a room and know what was in there. I'd want to know what was in women's rooms and their minds. And their, like just, it was really, um, and because I grew up in a very divided time. Right. Right. So I'm 55 years old. So watch a Mad Men just to see how we were literally in other locker rooms for, you know, the, well, the, right? the Porky's and Animal House and Caddyshack and the things that were accepted yeah. and the things that were encouraged were very different. I mean, they're enormously and hard to look at now. Where you're right. Like, oh, and my the gosh. steps forward. And it's it's why when a guy like Kavanaugh or when a guy who who cannot admit the errors, it was like, you can tell me it's a different time and you were a child. Okay. So you're saying you did that. And the thing is, is when I was 15 years old, there were uh, the two times, like one, an old guy kissed me once. And when I say an old guy, he was probably 30. And I <laughs> right. met him at a, at a party. And how old were you? 15. Oh, 15. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and he that gave is old. Me, it's, it was old. Yeah. That, that demarcation at that time is old. And he was gross. And he was like, he had given me a ride home from uh, my, fr I was just hanging, well, I was 14, because I was hanging out with a friend of mine whose parents owned a bar in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. My parents were like, why are you hanging out with that woman? She's nuts. And her family is gross. And I'm like, have you looked at our family? Anyway, so, uh, but it was, they were just more white trash than we were, right? Mm -hmm. And because they owned a bar, but I wanted to be where the bar was desperately. So um, I hung out with, I think her name was Kathy Benoit. Mm -hmm. um, nice and name. one of the guys at the bar said, uh, and South Milwaukee, Wisconsin is two miles square. And so I was like, well, I'm, I'm going home. And this guy goes, I'm leaving you on a ride. And I said, sure. And so he had a Harley Davidson. Now, my mother died when I was seven on a Harley Davidson. So we're like two blocks away from my house. And I was like, this has been really fun. You're going to have to drop me off here. Because if I show up uh, with an old guy on a Harley Davidson, everyone's going to lose their fucking mind. And I only thought that they were going to lose their mind about the motorcycle. I didn't think about the dude. <laughs> right. And the dude goes, all right, um, the ride costs a kiss. And it was my first kiss. And it was gross. Because wow. he was a smoker. Wow. And he just, he just like, French kissed me, and I didn't know what it was. And I was like, well, that was wow. something. And so then I go home. But it was a thing where he took advantage of who I was, a child, you yep. know, a girl child. Right. By, but he, it was, like, if I talk to that guy now, like, he's probably, like, I'm 53. He's got to be 73 years old, right? Right. And or more, right? Like pushing 80. He'd be like, no, that was gross. Like he might go, yeah, I did that. And that was gross. And like, like if he were an adult yes, human. It's possible to say I didn't understand the implications of what I was doing. Then. Because everything was given to me. I'm in a fishbowl where everything is given to me. That's my fucking castle. But only by clues and never by direct. No, so no that, nobody yeah. handed you a 20 and said, this is all yours. Everyone just... It, it was just expect it was what but nobody said to you the thing there was no education about any of it no one explained to you there were manners mm? mm -hmm. uh and we were all it was yep. all based on women waited until then and this and so they're the girls that gave it up and the girls that didn't and they were Nobility all these sort of, and chivalry that's and... right and white men never had to like they, I, the the truth about white men is they just didn't understand uh, uh, really until recently like whole like first off <laughs> As we go back and look at entertainment, everybody that wasn't a white person's thrilled they weren't a part of. <laughs> like, well, I guess I didn't really want to be in that at all. I mean, it's, you know, I'm making fun of them. But, right. But the idea, <laughs> so not, I mean, what I you're saying is how bad I don't want that people didn't want to work. Yes. How, what they would have had to have been a part of. Those 
things that you just mentioned, well, those the, movies that were... The woman who were... was Mamie in um, Holiday Inn, mm-hmm. the Bing Crosby... Uh, who else? Fred Astaire, maybe? Cary yeah. Grant? Yeah. I forget. Anyway, so um, I watch it every year. But there's a scene in Blackface, and the woman who plays Mamie is Bing Crosby's um, housekeeper. And I and I looked at her career one time. She literally could have played Lady Macbeth. She, her training and right. her... Right. right. But she was like, no, I would like to work. Right. So she took a job. in, And Bing Crosby employed... He tried to put uh, as many black people into every movie he did. And he only got like one or two roles. And they were always shitty roles. But he was like... Uh, here's a hundred bucks, <laughs> you know? Right. So he also beat his children. So, I mean, everybody's human. And I think that, but, but I think you're right about the learning curve is very steep right yeah, now for I dudes. Mean, look, I, I won't, I'm not defending anybody, but without no. us looking at how we got here, you can't like people. The thing I, I really sort of blanch at is the, like, um, uh, when, when the conversation has to stop. You know, well, that sounds like an excuse. Well, that's what an excuse is. It's a series of steps that led to a decision. It doesn't mean that it's right. But no. if we don't know, like, look, Harvey Weinstein is a monster, right? Yeah. Uh, Kevin Spacey, purpose. monster. But also, I guarantee you, nobody sat him down ever in his life and went, hey, look, you have a penis and uh, you're, you're, here's how you use it. And you might have feelings. And if you ever feel like you want to jerk off into a plant or something like that. Call somebody. Let's talk about it. Let's. Your sexuality is, you know, now, thankfully, gratefully, and with great um, excitement, people are allowed to explore however it is that they're feeling, and there's people they can talk to about it, and it's not a perfect place, but boy, it's different. And I think we have to go back and go, hey, we didn't educate our own. We, no, we didn't take care of people. didn't go... Well, it's no, gross we've just to tell been your plugging kids, along, kids, yeah, and we don't for two hundred years. That's right. So, like, women had to have someone with them. They had to have a swinging dick to stop other swinging dicks. Because if right. you were a woman alone, right. you were you're, and in many countries still, if you are a woman alone, you are just a chair. That uh, you're a hole. You're a you're something that can be attacked and can be murdered and raped and killed. Uh, because why are you alone? Right. Why aren't you why are why don't you have a man to protect you or a group of people? So as we've been plugging along and women are like, we would like to be treated like people. And you're like, well, what does that mean? That we don't treat you like people? It's like, it means we'd like to just walk around and not be murdered. Well, and, right, and the answer to the question is, yes, how are we not? The, only, the first answer to that question is, oh, are we not doing that? Let's fix it. Right. How, what do we need to do? And 70% of the men throughout humanity have been like, oh, so I just don't. Uh, all right, I'm already not murdering people. You would also like not to be murdered. You're like, exactly. Right. And they're like, well, what about guys murder other guys? He's like, you don't need to that. Uh, you don't need to murder us more. Uh, you're, you got you nailed that. Right. You, you're just. And so but the the and in the 70s, when we grew up, it was very much the whole women's liberation and the and the we're like, well, you should treat women like men. And, and so there was a lot of. Lack the, it was a changing time when the protections of the manners and the sh- chivalry is dead. How many times do we hear that? Right, right. Where you're like, no, it, I don't want chivalry. I want basic humanity. You know, decent humans not right. murdering and and raping each other. But when people think about women's lib, they're like, well, they just want to have the right to go out and have sex with everybody. Well, that no, see, that's a. I mean, no, I a, want to go to the store and yes, not be murdered. Part- Yes, yes. I want to park. But people, but guys and pe- attached to that part of the, you know, and one of the things I, I used to say early days when the book came out is um, just because women changed didn't mean that men did. Right. So and their relationship to how they have been, you know, we forget the how easy it is to stamp a DNA idea. Like I feel like as you go along, you go, look, some of the things that I do and think have been passed down for generations and I have to unlearn them on my own because they're wrong. And, but it took me a long time to even see it, let alone be able to go, I have to push back from the table on that. Right. Right. And it's funny that the way you put it is that women changed, but men didn't because women never changed. We were always people. A hundred percent. But the weird That's thing is, right, right. is the perception. What we did was Chinese water torture on dudes going, no, seriously. No, seriously. Right. And 
Do you know why? Bitches, man. We're very naggy. Anyway, but we've been doing it for 11,000 years. Right. And eventually, we didn't, we're just like, we, we've gotten a certain, we got, in 1850, we got 12% of the men in the, on, in, the, in the country of the United States of America to understand, or Great Britain, we would like the vote. We would like uh, to be able to ride a stride, right? Or ride a horse normal. We'd like our own carriage. We would like um, possibly jobs. We'd like to learn how to read and write. And 12% of the men in in Western culture were like, okay, sure. And then in 1900, it was 20%, right? And so incrementally, it is, it's because men are physically larger and they just, some men just take what they, because it is an animalistic thing. Right. Well, th- and, but there was a point before all of the way we're set up where women, you know, before that we were completely standing where women had a baby on their back and a club in their hand. Right. Like, I mean, it, there, there was a point where it was not the disparity it's become. There's right. A, you know, there were, and I do think as an, as a rule, that's and that's why we understand religion too. People like rules. People mm-hmm. want to know what am I, spo- who, what am I, what Boundaries? am I supposed to do? Right. And so I think when I say women change, it's because that's how people explained it to us. It, mm-hmm. Women are changing. And you go, okay. And then you go, no, they're at, well, that's what they're calling it because they need to get out from under the oppression yeah. of this sort of, this is how it's supposed to go for women and this is how it's supposed to go for men. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, it's true. I mean, the, the, the boundaries and the defining of things helps every, I mean, everybody needs a, to some extent a, a, a lined ruled spreadsheet of a place to put everything. Right. I do think there are genuinely white men of all, uh, and also men just in general now of like, okay, what, <laughs> so what is okay? You know, how, what is a, what is a, an abuse of power and a, and a genuine connection in a workplace where one of us works above the other. And so like, are they taking advantage of me? Am I taking advantage of them? Um, uh, you know what? Um, well, I'm all, men the, are already not doing very much mm-hmm. as it is because it's just the way it's evolved. Um, and also, I think men, the, again, the GNA stamping. There's not a lot on the man front to do anymore. What in do terms you, of what? like, well, in the in the where as people, we don't have to settle anything. We don't have to kill anything anymore. We don't have to do anything. Um, that requires sort of if there if men have physical strength over right. women, which is you know I think we all pretty much agree with that. Um, that is useful. That is a useful thing. You will traditionally go, yes. has been right. That we're not going to be carrying a child. We won't have the everything that goes with that. We don't have your mechanics. We have ours, and ours were useful in that. Like I have strength. I have size. I have speed. Maybe you know not all, and we always know it's only really a few, but. That sort of is a paradigm. Like you're like, okay, that I understand. Right. And Th- then we, things got defined by that way for sure. Right. And then we kept that in place when it no longer when there was a zero need for it. Right. When the wheel was invented and all these things. But it it, it and then <laughs> yes. it was like, yeah. I mean, there's it. It's yeah. The whole masculine feminine thing is so. It is fascinating. I I can see why you've spent a fair amount of time thinking yeah. about it because you've it's. It's almost impossible to explain that nobody wants to take anything away from men, right? Like, like you're like, no, what you're saying is that, that I have to check in about everything. And you're like, well, everyone has to check in. Like, all women have to check in about everything all the time. We're not, I'm not trying right. to take away you, your, your, uh, there's, for, it's like uh, the law of abundance, there's plenty for everyone, but there is, I mean, to define it very basically, there is manners. I mean, if you got to define it that way, women check in with men all the time. Is it okay if we do this? I'm thinking of doing this. Um, is that interfering with your, like, if you're That's so funny. That's the opposite in my, in my relationship. I'm always like, I'm going to, is everything, I'm gonna, I check in with. <laughs> right, you check in with your partner. I check in with all the time. I, yeah. yeah, I just don't go do things. I really don't. And America can go do things, and I, I'm like, well, that's what she's doing. Right. Well, it's, it's not, I don't check in with him. Like if I'm like, I literally all, all I'm, I'm not checking in like my movements. That would be. Yeah, for the course. Right. That feels weird, but it, um, no, but it's like the things where you go, 
like but if, but Amira, if we're doing if, something if, together, if Amir just doesn't show up in the evening because or the girls they went somewhere and they didn't okay. tell me where it was and that's okay and I don't have to know if I don't come home, uh, I'm like, is it okay? I'm but, hey, but I'm if, out. I'm gonna be out for a couple hours and I just letting you know. <laughs> you right, know. and if you have the kids, and if I had the kids, now that I'm checking in. And we're then all checking you, you, in. Then yeah. yeah, like if if she if she takes the kids and doesn't come home for dinner, does yep. she check in? No. But if you uh, go out with the kids and you don't come home, I've checked in before I left and on my way, and usually once from dinner. Okay, it's um, but I, that's good. I I like whatever you're doing, quite honestly. But uh, that's not what I'm talking about. Because I was talking about like like in relationships, in 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 the whole sort of sexual, uh, the psychosexual kind of thing, right? Where you ask if you can do something, and like because okay, um. Because I read a fair number of romance novels, okay. and especially since November 7th, 2016, uh, I have been uh, thousands of dollars uh, spent on romance. Is that right? What was oh, yeah. it? What, just um... just, uh, just constant. I'm writing one for Audible. Oh. And uh, so it's – I've read a lot of – I, and so there are there, – there's a store – and Rangers, people who listen to this know. There's a store in Culver City called The Ripped Bodice, and it is a brick-and-mortar romance novel store, and it's one of the only ones in the world. And do they also carry the the seedier side of that book? They are so Components? specific. I don't know if you're looking for gay male cowboys who really are Christian. They have that section. I – Okay, this is a side conversation, and we won't. I won't. I won't. Um, uh, because I anyway. But there's a yeah. lot of consent issues, and there's a lot of sort of checking in from, like at work. Like you were talking about the the work situation, right? And like if you were in a position of power, or if I'm in a position of power, let's let's do it from my point of view because um, I can only speak for myself, obviously, right? So I'm headlining the feature, and let's say I'm single. Uh, cause that cleans up whatever other problems I might have in, in the fact that I would be attracted to the feature. I would be attracted to either a waiter or, um, one of the other comics. Uh, I am in the complete position of power because I'm the headliner right? and I'm making more money than them every week. And so I could say, Hey, do you want to go out for dinner to that guy? And I say that usually when I'm not attracted to anybody, but that's because right. I like to have dinner. Yes. But the um, but I I would it would be my responsibility. The headliner the, always takes the guys to the mall one time and you buys gotta lunch. Go. That's what you do. You take it, them out. God damn it! It's the it's beautiful. It's a beautiful it's thing. It's a beautiful they, thing. They like to watch you spend money it's, and then you buy them. Oh, it's lunch. a rite of passage. I went out. I used to go with Ray Romano and Wayne Fetterman, and like I loved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you yeah, get but, those shoes, man. Okay. Right. Exactly. Uh, well, I mean, and, I think, think about that over ribs. <laughs> And it's, but it's, but it, there's no way that it's not my responsibility. If, if, if I'm more, it's, it's like being a parent. Right. You, um, if you are in the position of power, you, you don't get to be the child. Well, they get that to is be true. And you, and you have to, um, right. And so in some, you either abdicate your position or you, um, uh, I mean, usually just don't act on it. Right. Yeah. If there's an attraction there, the other person, but it's very difficult. And I never, I mean, look, I, I, no, I did not. You uh, have to well, follow yeah. those rules in the early days of like initiating uh, with waitresses or uh, never, never comics usually. And usually with, and with comics always, it was the other way around. It would always go the other way around. I never because mm-hmm. I I had and I didn't I would even say with the waitresses sometimes. But th- there was a sort of like, hey, look, you don't live here. I don't live here. We're, we're all going out for drinks. I'm letting you know. Come say hi. And right. Yeah. But but now mm-hmm. if I were single, I wouldn't do it. I'd say this is probably a brooch of some kind of protocol and it's not worth it to me. Right. It's a you learned know? skill. It's yes. um, Lewis Lee at Acme uh, has traditionally not booked some comics. And I believe that both that I know of weren't men for years until he had, he was like, he just stopped booking them because they hit on all the waitresses. And then he had conversations with those two gentlemen who continued to be funny. Uh, and he right. wanted to book them again. And he's like, I want to book you. You cannot hit on my waitstaff. And um, and so they both work there again, to my knowledge. Yeah. So, but it's... Which is a, 
given the layout of that club, it's a pretty easy thing to do to not. You can stay away from everybody there. Yeah. You walk in, turn to the left, you're on the shade, walk out, go to the right, you're out. Right. You have your own green room. It's yeah, you've a, got your, yeah. they're on a whole other wall. They're right. They're in a, a restaurant. There's yep. a whole club in between you. Yep. It doesn't have to happen. You have to look for it. So, But it's it's it, it's. I think that there is so much learning that has to be done. Well, and to be – I mean, you could break just comedians down for a whole thing. I mean, just the thing of like most comedians were uh, – never could meet girls and suddenly they do this thing that they have been wanting to do their whole lives where they get to be the full-blown fun version of themselves speaking mm-hmm. in a non-conversational way and then people like them and it hasn't happened before and it does not get old and you are surprised and right. you are delighted um but ultimately that's not why you're there and and right. the comedy should be self-sustaining but there is that thing of like man nobody it is not i it struggled is. through this and i struggled through that and everybody has those stories of like oh this is just a guy who he did now he's rich and whatever it's like Look, everybody deserves love. Everybody deserves to have someone be attracted to you. And it's not an easy thing, especially for a man. You can't, you can't peacock that much. You Most of the time you had to do the initiating or the wouldn't mm-hmm. happen. My father was like, you are not a wallflower. You're going to have to get out there. <laughs> and uh, he goes, I don't mean that in a bad way, but he goes, no. the part of the fun of you is who you are. And, and so that's how I was raised, right? So now you have, you have two 16-year-old girls and I just stand over on the side and go, if anyone... If there's trouble, I want to, yeah, 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 please ask for help. And it's, my brother, uh, Russ, is an econ professor at the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater, and he teaches a lot of um, first years, and he has a lot of sort of young, he also enjoys the 40s a great deal, so he likes to refer to them as co-eds. But uh, (laughs) Uh, I love that uh, kind (laughs) of... He's he's kind of great, yeah. And, uh, but he and Coeds is right down the middle, right? But, yeah, he, but he's referring, yeah. It's uh, he's being a goof, but uh, but the deal is this: is he actually said to me about I think it was Louis or some other comic, and he was just like, you know, those guys go through their lives and they don't have anybody, and they're not good looking, and then they finally get somebody, and they kind of lose their minds. And I said, so. Um, you didn't have a girlfriend all through high school, and you've been kind of a schlub. Uh, you teach 18 to 22-year-old women. Do you take advantage of them? And he's like, no, no, but I'm me. And I said, he's not a monster. You are someone who – and my, and it's not like he was raised any differently. Like it's he was raised by our father, which means lightly. Right. Very, very – There's a there was a there was light hands on the reins Older there. than you? Young, closest yes, one older. to you in the family? No, two up. Um, okay. And but the thing is, is he doesn't. He's not that guy. To right. somewhat, to some extent, there is nature, and to some extent, there is nurture. Right. Yeah. And it is not in Russ's nature to take advantage of someone weaker than himself. It's in his nature to berate them into rising to their full potential and then they either make it or fail. He is a he's a grump, but he is but he's not someone who will take advantage and that I think is nature. I mean so, I think to a certain degree it's also what you um I mean sometimes you what you grow up with is the uh, you're smart enough to go no thank you. Right. And sometimes like my father I've never heard my father and I mean this sincerely like he just didn't make sexist jokes ever and he loved women but he didn't talk about it a lot but you could just tell he just loved that he was an admirer he loved yes. my mom he was faithful to my mom but he the second he my not long after my mom passed there was his dance card was filled 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 that's nice it um um but my, he, my father never made sexist jokes either and he was not faithful but he he was always super clean around us like i like there's no it's, he was never gross. He was just uh, an adulterer. Right. But <laughs> so, there wasn't even rules of like, this is what men do and this is what women do. We just right. sort of followed what happened. My mom was a really bright but troubled uh, Stanford grad with mm-hmm. an English degree. And I think she had hopes of things she would like to have done and then just, you know, whatever, didn't do them. Or, you know, I feel like more of, more of what happened to her was her own uh, failure to put herself out there rather than any sort of oppression from my father, but they loved each other and they treated each other like adults and they kept their relationship to themselves. They also took a lot of time for themselves. There was a demarcation between kids and, and parents. And there was a time where parents were, it was their time now and you were go get lost or hide or whatever. And, you know, it was different. Now we're in our, my kids are all, you know, where it's like, a, my kids are like the important people in the house, which I don't love. And, uh, <laughs> I love them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, 
but it, but because the di- it's hard to ask for that old dynamic of no, I want to sit at the head of the table, I want to be the head of the family, I'm the guy, and uh, it just isn't you know. Um, so the, those structures as they begin to fall apart, I think men go. I'm not sure my place. Like I genuinely don't know. I mean, I think there's a, a kind of like... Oh, there's a lot of confusion. We, right. Sometimes you see somebody who gets to be just one sort of solid thing in a movie and you go, ah, it was just so much simpler. When, you know, you this is what was expected of you. This is how you were supposed to behave. And this is how all boys behaved. And you're mm-hmm. like, well, I agree with that or I don't. But, you know, and that isn't about... To me, that it isn't even about like gay or straight or whatever. It's about sort of take, owning your place in the world, the gravitas in which you do things and sort of... Um, doing what's expect what, what's, what you expect of you, regardless of whether it works for anyone's gender, right? You know, and that's a tough thing because you're right. Women never said back down; they just said share the fucking space or get out of the way. Right, right. It's it's very much it's 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 understandable from from my point of view. It's understandable how much confusion there is among among men and how. Because I feel like I've been explaining it forever. Right. And I will continue to explain it. And more men are hearing it. Yeah. And it helps. The internet definitely helps because it amplifies it. You know, previously, women would go one to another and say, avoid that guy. Uh, You know, that's a good guy. This type of thing, right? And now we can all, to some extent, complain and laud different men all at once. You know, but and it's one of loud. the problems is is there's nobody saying. So yesterday, my daughter and I were talking. There's a, a musician named Teddy Geiger, okay, uh, who was uh, uh, is a she mm-hmm. has transitioned, okay. And I was trying to explain. I said, "Oh, the, here's a picture of him," and I kept saying him because I yeah. knew him originally. I just found this out a couple right. days ago. And she goes, they, you know, and I'm like, that, that's how they were. And this is how they are. Right. And I'm, but, and so we're having that conversation, but like, should I have had that conversation on panel somewhere? And I, it's, it's hardly <laughs> egregious, but that's that thing of like, Hey, like hang with me while I'm learning, you know, right. it's that Bill, Bill Burr joke of like, you know, uh, the Caitlyn Jenner thing is like, if your buddy walked out and then came back and he was a woman, wouldn't you have a man to go, fuck, wait, what's happening? Right. Let everybody sort of. It, it's already assumed that you're like not getting it, and you're and you're uh, you you know th- that you're coming from this position of, and you're also like, it takes a long time to learn things, to relearn or understand. Right. And and all the trans people that I know are under understanding of that. And when I say oh, all, I'm it's talking never about them. Three humans. <laughs> anyway, but, no, uh, I know, I know. And the they and the changing of names and the and the and the and the learning curve is very steep. And it's pretty understanding that, that it's going to take a second. There's a great line at the end of Deadpool, the first Deadpool movie, where um, the actress, uh, his the girlfriend, sees Deadpool without his mask for the first time. Yeah. And she said, well, after a certain amount of t- adjustment and a lot of uh, booze or whatever, that is a face uh, I would allow to sit on me. So it, it's it, a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful Deadpool. Uh, yes, it also wrests all the control away from from him to her, and that movie, and it's like, oh, it's not really, a, you know, it's anti thing. Is the one of the best romantic comedies that's ever. It is a hundred percent romantic comedy. There's even it's the Notting Hill sort of winter to <laughs> winter to summer fuck thing where they yeah yeah and it's fun and it's and cute they cut and that built, out of Delta. They um, well yeah, but they built they built they kept it in such all a the way. murder yeah, and and he's a. He's a, you know, he's a guy learning. And this is to the depths to which he wanted to. Actually, Deadpool is an excellent example because the entire plot of Deadpool is narcissism. Yes. Is, is entirely about he's in, trying to get his looks back. That's because right. he does not that's feel right. valid that's right. with this woman because of how he looks. And that's, his, that's the entire hilarious plot. Yeah. Um, which and men have lowers, still not gotten that point. Well, and it's right, and it's and it's a, it's but it's a real, it it it, it makes Deadpool and the Ant Man like the Ant Man series. I also love a great deal mm-hmm. because these are not world saving superheroes. The whole point of Ant Man is he wants to spend more time with his daughter, but he's a fuck up, and he's not allowed. 
Right. And uh, so he's like, if I can just keep my act together, I'll get to hang out with my kid. Right. And uh, and he's not the primary caregiver, uh, nope. but he wants to spend as much time as he can, but he's a fuck up. And uh, right. that's – and if he can get his – and that's the whole plot of the movie. That's right. And, and But he has a super suit. And, and he has, Yeah, he has yes. a super suit. Yeah. And, and a couple of idiot friends who are fun. And, mm-hmm. and uh it's a yeah no there's a um look which those two movies actually are great ex- explorations of masculinity oh my god and then my daughters for whatever reason who have exquisite taste they're like we'd love to watch mad men and i was like i i cannot watch mad wow, men i will only watch the ads on mad men like yeah. i love all the advertising stories yes the regular stories like the scene where she litters uh the scene with the abortions the scene i mean yeah the that, rest of it's just brutal well there's really brutal parts of it but when you watch it the it is the end of a uh, it's the beginning of the end of that kind of thinking the men are all failing and they're falling one by one and peggy who is the Right, the virginal whatever one, and then Joan, who's the quote unquote right, the tart, the tart. They're both succeeding. They're finding ways to succeed, and they continue to succeed despite their setbacks. And it is, and Peggy, it's really Peggy's story in a weird way. Don is, yeah, you know, pathetic, yeah, and um, uh, it's a real incrimination of of uh, of that what that was and how it all fell apart. Roger is a dinosaur before the series is over and lost, and it's they're sad. Um, well, it's – I mean there's – everything is going to – I mean I've had the same realization with race. Mm. The learning curve is very steep for men right now, also very steep for Whitey Magoos. Yep. Because yes. it turns out people of color have always just wanted to be people. And they're not anything – but they've had to work 110% harder because of perceived differences. And right. So that's right. What you saw in Mad Men were those two women working their asses off to get to the middle. <laughs> right. And right. they were successful, in your opinion, because the white guys around them who had everything, they lost everything and went down to the middle. And right. those women made it to the middle. And so it's 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 the perception that that's where. Some white guys can't – I mean, you can hear it. The best men in my life can hear it. They're just like, I know that other people have not had the non-disadvan – they've not had the disadvantage. And that's what it is. No, and you can't – look, it, it – the – um um, Larry Wilmore said this. I was working on a show with him, and he said, "Look, America is the most self-correcting country in the world. Nobody has evolved as quickly as we have, despite our, despite it's, it's the, adorable and beautiful and powerful yes, and, and amazing. All that is a Mad Men is a portrait of self-correction. It is. It is. This is not. This doesn't work anymore, and it's starting to crumble. And yes, they don't ultimately. It's they don't succeed, but it's a true story of the girls. They." Are determined. They're also they're learning on the job. No one prepared them for this. Peggy wants to write copy. She's bright. She gets it. She understands how to connect into this thing. And but and nobody more like wants Don, her. No, no. But she's more like Don and the and 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 the connection that they have, which is one of the only like which is on the intellectual level that he understands that she gets it. And you know, and also he knows there's something there. Yeah, right. It's great. Right. He's also pathetic. Oh yeah, he's pathetic. Like it's just <laughs> he's like very pathetic. yeah and. But then, you know, the fact that his wife then also goes crazy a little bit, like, or just starts to sort of move to the right because it, when she, it, you know, they're married and she's sexually excited. She's like, I think about you all day. And that's like the most frightening thing to him. Mm-hmm. Right? No, that means she, how is she in control? She can't, what do you mean? No, I'm the, I have sex with people. Mm-hmm. They don't have their own, right? And that's, you can see when she tells him that, that he's like, she's got to see a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Her urges put her in a chair. Yeah. Right? But yeah. he's out, he's able to just be, you know, and look, he's just I, able I, to be. Yeah. 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 And it's, I mean, it is weird. I mean, the th- you talk about your mom with the Stanford thing and, and how she had dreams and she didn't put herself out there. But it's – it was a different generation where, right. like, she – it doesn't mean – when, when, I, when I look at my stepmother, my mother was a disaster of 
of ambition. Of She was 15, 16 when she got pregnant. Wow. And she was dead by 33, oh my God. 34. So it was not... Her potential was never addressed at all. And so it was... There's a Garfunkel and Oates. You know those guys, yeah, right? Yeah, right. They've got a, an amazing... It's just a just sweet little song that they wrote called 50-50. And it's uh, I think it's a new one, and it's uh, and it's about how they want to be in a relationship, but they it's going to be fifty fifty because if this if my career takes me somewhere else, I got to go there. If you um, if you want to have kids, we're going to have to talk about it. And if all that sounds um, uh, um, greedy or or somehow, it wouldn't sound that way if it came from you. It would sound like, oh no, I gotta. My career is really important. If I have to go, I gotta go. I'll, I'll be back. I'll totally be back. If I'll right. be there for you, but I'm only gonna be there for you. Um, but I also wanna. I have these dreams, and I have to do them. And it's an amazing. It's like it's literally just a tiny nugget of a song. Like it's light because they're on the ukulele and the, and they're just you know they're, and it's and their stuff sounds light, but it was and they talk about how their moms. May not their dreams might not have been to have kids, and she's like, "Well, I don't know, my mom." And, and uh, <laughs> Ricky looks at Kate and goes, "All the moms, you don't know all the moms." And right. she's like, "All the moms?" He's like, "Yeah, all the moms." I'm sorry, and because uh, we don't know, and we'll never know, and it's and it's it's water under the bridge, right? You know, but 100%. when I think about the the 25 year old women now, we're in a golden age of young women comics. Like the, th- have you seen thirty-year-old oh, comics right I, now? It's just in general. Like I, uh, there's every week I I see someone and I go, God, what am I doing? Why am I? It's it's amazing. Why am I? Fifteen here? years ago, though, there was Matt Bronger and there was Kanane and there was a there was a slew of young white dudes that I was like, holy shit! Yeah, this, guy, this is a golden age of comics. Yeah, it was a golden. It's been a golden age of comedy, but it was young white men about 10, 12 years ago. But when when we when we when I started, you came a little after me. But like the popular people in my the the, the first popular people of the nineties comedians, which was the last time white guys were awesome, right? Was <laughs> I don't Garofalo, know. Griffin, um, uh, you talking ninety seven. 96, 90, well, you're talking the, all, the sort of Largo y thing, or yes, but right before that. Well, the beginning of Uncabaret and yeah. Largo was, you know, when Janine started making mm-hmm. a name for herself around 93, 94, it's right like around Lulu's in in, uh, in New York and Largo here and, and Uncab and, and she, Uncab, and yeah. uh, um, she was making, I think, Cats and Dogs when I moved down here in 94. Oh, wow. So she, and so they was already, um, uh, you know, reality bites. But she was like the beginning of a whole different kind of. You know, if yeah. I used to say to people, if, if Kurt Cobain had had a bratty sister, you know, she sort of grabbed onto the zeitgeist of what the what the that no. s- third wave or second wave of feminism became under the riot girls and all that stuff that happened. Oh, that was an amazing time. That was definitely an and the men time. were very. I mean, look, they were all junkies, but every white guy who fronted a grunge band said, "Gays are awesome, rap is amazing," like. You yeah. know, like there was these really sort of evolved, interesting cats. And then, <laughs> and I don't blame him, but then, uh, you know, the uh, King of Queens and everyone loves Raymond and the men are squares in the doghouse. And yeah. it just, it, 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 and also those guys all fell apart. And that, that sort of, they never became sort of leaders in that way that like you need men out there at that oh, time. Oh, so stand up wise. It's, um, do you, do you mean like performance wise? Yes, yeah. Entertainment promoting women, promoting right. the bikini kills, promoting and the and and before Mister Show, uh, you know, um, the women were the ones in our scene. Margaret were the ones that yeah. people wanted to see. Not, not right. No, no. Yeah, no. It was an amazing time. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. And, and you were here for it. I was. Yeah. I was in Madison, Wisconsin, in 1984. Yeah. Uh, until 1988, and then I in, was in Minneapolis in '90 until '96, '97. When right. I came out here. Right. And so I, like, I saw, you know, the people that came through Minneapolis and nobody was, 
I think Scott Hansen was like, women comics, sure, I'll book Diane Ford. Yes. And you're like, that's fine, but I'm going to need Margaret Cho. I'm going to need Janine Garofalo. I'm going to need Kathy Griffin. I'm going to need... Um, I remember standing next to Margaret Cho in 1997, and someone did a joke about O.J. Simpson, and I said, do you think he did it? And she just she told, turned full face to me and goes, yeah, yeah, he did it. Where have you been? And I said, Minneapolis. And she was like, you get what? And I was like, no, I just, I refused. I wasn't on the jury, so I refused to pay attention. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and she was like, wow, I wish. And then, but it was like, there was, there, and it's like that now. Like if you've seen Brandy Posey, if you've oh, yeah. seen Carmen Morales, but, if you've seen, and but the, women and the, are anointing other women. At that time, it was, and this is just the way it felt. It was like the alternative scene was like, like anybody, c- come on in. Anybody, we're we're changing the rules again. Right. You know, it, it, you don't have to just do one kind of comedy. Although it'd be nice if you were negative about everything, but <laughs> but like you came in and people loved you right away. And mm-hmm. Laura House came in and people loved her. Lynn Shawcroft, like people came in and there were, um, and of course there was Karen Kilgariff and and uh, Mary Lynn, and there was that right. sort of, um, uh, there was a a understandable respect of you're a comic, right? You're a comic, right? You know that's it. Uh, you're we well, go up on stage. You're funny. I'm funny. But that's it. There's no you know among us. Right. Among us. Right. It was the, the alt community was actually much more accepting of all that stuff. And everybody was still trying to get laid. And there was still. Including the women. Including the women. To be fair. But, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, yeah. um, but it wasn't, it, it was a lot more inclusive than the clubs, the, the club circuit. And the, cause the club circuit. Of course. You would work your ass off and it was still the middle, but it was, um, just, there that created i think a generation of and 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 because of like lisa line gang and putting those women on television right it allowed a bunch of 11 year olds to go oh i can do stand up comedy 100% i mean 100%. all 100% literally all i had was rose marie so uh from the dick van dyke show so <laughs> and yes. it was and she was amazing right but it wasn't and laverne and shirley and it was and that was fine oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was but yeah, it wasn't yeah. but rose marie was fucking she was a writer she wasn't married she was a comedy writer and she was a ball buster and she was awesome and it was i mean and there weren't any like amy schumers there weren't just girls right. that were just and amy just, schumer helped Le- Le- nikki glazer Yep. And Chelsea per- and Chelsea Handler helped Chelsea, you know, all, yeah. all of those. Yeah. And so it's become you're like you don't just stand there, and it's happening. But men didn't. Here's what's awesome in a weird way, and this is the truth always of any any group that's repressed. The the first ones to break through are undeniable. Yeah. There were lots of deniable white guys working all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I think just about my career, normal. I got. Three development deals or four development deals in a row, like they just kept developing just this one piece people. like that. Also, I was white and I was funny, and that was what they mm-hmm. needed. But a black guy would go like, "Well, we, when do we do black people?" So Wednesdays, we have one slot on Wednesday for one comic to give a development deal. Like, the the the, the, the we're not going to give a show to a woman. Then we give one to. I mean, we have Roseanne, but we'll take a break. Like yeah. they're just like I don't think that un, the, us understanding like for for me it was always a probably possibly. Yeah. Probably it's possible for you. It was maybe for black men and women. It was no, 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 you're, no, no. You have to work three hundred times harder if you're a black woman That's or right. a black guy, right? And if you're a woman, I mean, it it gets easier, right? I mean, the, your pigmentation somehow fucking makes the guy who's in charge of Scrooge McDuck money go okay. But a friend of mine who is a black woman comic and a delight was just pitching a TV show. And she said that the guy said to her, well, does she have to be so angry? And he said, and she said, I'm not, it's not angry. I'm a mess. It's, I mean, there's a thousand shows where the white dude is a mess and he's not angry. He's just kind of a mess. That's what I am. And he's like, Oh, okay. So you're, not, and she's like, "Is are you think I'm a ma- I'm angry because I'm a black woman in this case?" And the guy just kind of sat back. He goes, "I think I did." And the fact that she could say it and he could hear it and he could say that is progress. It is not necessary. She didn't get the deal, uh, but it's sometimes it's the increments are are maddening. They that, are maddening. That, that's why everybody's mad 
because you're like, I I feel like I've been explaining to confused gentlemen for 40 years. And I have. And, but only for the last five or 10 years have I thought I'm done explaining, but that's because I'm 53 and that, um, or because every rock has turned over in this country and every skidball in the world is getting the light of day. And it's unfortunate. No, that, that is, that is true. On the other hand, I feel like we'll look back and say the watershed moment was when, when, when gay men and women were given the, the, the Marriage. ability to marry mm-hmm. and that door opened and everyone started to come through. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We just started paying attention to. And yeah. I think one of the kind of interesting things is there's going to be so many different class of just different ways that we, women, men and women decide to be who it is they are that people go. Let's just not even talk about why, why we, you know, we should have not been bugging people about this shit in any way. We should just stop talking. It just should be. Let's all move on. And let's all celebrate whatever each and every one of us are. And right. what I do love is, right. is the powerful gay men that have been decent. That's been exciting as to what is to them to push the door open wider for women yes. and for trans and for and for people of color and to just go. No, seriously, we don't know how long the door is going to be open. Come on in. And, right. you know, it's sort of a, a, a queer eye. The, even the change of that show from right. the last queer eye to this queer eye yeah. is exponential. It's and, funny, isn't it? Yeah. It's funny. And I love those. And I love, look, that I was love a the really old. good thing. It too. was good too. But those guys had to be there to be the whatever. Now you look back at it, it's a little, like, can you imagine if there was a show with all, just all black people? She had to be white. Like it is a stereotype. On the other hand, those guys explained that to people who didn't understand it. Right. Or they're like, oh my God, I like, I'm sure there are people like, I do like those gay men on television. And right. I know that guy at the church is, I guess like, it's oh, okay. Maybe I don't get it. You know, like I think some people, are, like, like none of us come here with uh, everything and go, I get it. You know, we all have to, you know, I was driving in my car one day and there was listening to NPR and they had the audio tape of the woman who was harassed by the officer and then went and killed herself and she was in jail. And the, the, the fury that the wait, the, what happened? Do you remember there was the woman who was, she was arrested? She was uh, either speeding or she had tail light. Yeah, and the officer got her to the point, get out of the car, and she's yeah. like, I haven't done anything. And then when they put her in jail, okay, she oh, hung she herself. herself. Yes, and it was that thing of like, not that I didn't get it, but to be, I suddenly was in the car with her, and I went, oh, like there's this, your head explodes. You've been told something fifty two thousand times. You're like, I know, I understand that. I'm, I'm all, I'm all for it. But then all of a sudden, you have a body reaction and you I like I just burst I was like just burst into tears I was like that's been like that for everybody that's what they keep saying to you they keep saying yeah. it's like this for everybody and you're like I, I know that but I mean not everybody but like I just there's no way to get that thing in your body until you experience it kind yeah. of yeah and go also I've never experienced this not a day in my life not a day there's in my been, life there hasn't been an injustice in my life that has been anything like that not even yeah. cancer I didn't feel like cancer was nice enough to me <laughs> <laughs> right right you know? I mean it's yeah, and it's that kind of realization that 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 gives me a lot of hope. It really right, does. Right, right. Be- because we, I mean, history is inexorable. We're going to keep going. I mean, there's 8 billion people on the planet. If there's a billion left over, uh, Thanos is not entirely wrong. So uh, there were but- parts of Thanos where I went. Now, now, wait a second, <laughs> Killmonger. A, Killmonger, right, not look, entirely wrong. Look, man, so- if someone could just say, "Look, Greg, at about eh, maybe somewhere around seventy or something, you might just turn to dust. Like one day, just sitting mm-hmm. there and turn to dust. Please, <laughs> no long hospital right. visits. Nobody feeling bad for me. I don't lose any of my faculties. I just turn to sort of a brown dust. Mm-hmm. And there's more room for everybody else. Mm-hmm. I mean, I. Yep. You know. It's weird. But uh the You just uh, can't let somebody one person be in charge of that. Right, right. Then that will be Infinity Wars too. Oh, I can't wait. Welcome. Oh, I can't anyway, wait. so but yeah, it I mean that's what As I, we turn everything over to Captain Marvel. As we turn everything That's all we're waiting for. In the seventies or the nineties, actually. I think she's in the nineties. Yeah. It's uh yeah. It's um yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. That looks awesome. But that's the whole like that's that thing of like um you start to see this trend. I don't know if you watch Lost in Space, but mm. in the original, I actually believe the women stayed in the ship and cooked when they were on planets, <laughs> and the guys went out and did stuff. Yeah. And in this one, the guys are nothing but accidents. They're constantly fucking it up for them. The <laughs> women are making all the decisions. They're from you know, young kids yeah. or like that. Ozark, if you've watched it, it like, takes a turn this season. You're I'm like, watching Man. Cloak and Dagger. That's all I'm watching. You watching Cloak and Dagger? I, no, I don't even know what that it's is. It's a Marvel TV show. It's on Freeform. It's on Hulu. Oh, wow. And uh, five, five episodes. It starts slow. It's 
it's so much better than the comic books, quite honestly. It's about essentially these two teenagers, teen superheroes. I love them. Uh, so two teen superheroes. They uh, there's a uh, an RGB experiment that Roxanne is doing that goes wrong. They're both given superpowers. RGB is the uh, mutant hor- hormone that was a, a street hormone. They were doing experiments on it. These two little kids get powers and then they meet each other when they're like 15, 16. And uh, we get to find out about their families. We get to find a, there's such great character development on these things. Uh, Cloak is a rich and they switched it. They made uh dagger was the rich kid in the, in the, in the comic books, they make Cloak the rich kid and Dagger the the thief, and um, and he can teleport, and he has a cloak that uh, and it, he gets underneath. Essentially, he gets underneath a cloth, yeah. and he can teleport. And then she can create things out of light, including a dagger. And uh, that's uh, awesome. I think she can create other things, but so far, just a dagger. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. And uh, uh, but they are. It's it's compelling. It's compelling television, and of course, uh, it's Marvel. I, I and I, I like. It. I love them uh, dearly, and I'll tell you. So here's the story from being from young. So, um, I am even in comic books. I you know I loved Betty and Veronica. Mm-hmm. Loved them. You know they were just girls. They were just girls, and I loved Gwen Stacy. I read those Spider Mans all the time. All my cousins had them, and so they were laying around. And when Gwen Stacy died in that comic book for days, I was like bereft yeah and i'm like i don't i and i'm like and i was trying to explain this to my wife i'm like nobody died in comic books they nope. just didn't die but especially like and that it was his fault yeah that like while trying to save her i mean she shouldn't she would have only been there if not for him and then but her neck snaps when she when he hits her with the web and mm-hmm. it breaks and he pulls her up and he doesn't know she's dead which is always that oh, that horrible scene and i was just like for days i couldn't and i was like i, I just couldn't get down with mary jane um but I loved Gwen. I love that whole. Who wrote that? The uh, Gwen Stacy does. Any idea? Um, Offhand. Yeah, uh, I re- I'm, an, I'm brain farting his name. Um, but Stan Lee was out of town at the time, and he didn't realize what he'd said yes to. And when he got back, he was furious. And well, he should be because the thing is, is comic book writers will often kill a character, yeah, so that the writer can be immortalized. I'm the guy that killed Superman. I'm the guy that killed yeah, Captain America. He wasn't their normal writer, and there's no reason to kill Gwen Stacy. And there's no reason. Yeah, there's you want to you want to. I'm going to argue with you that there is. Well, there was a reason. I'll tell you why. The A, oh my God, this can happen in comic books, which is just like when they start offering people on Lost and you go, no, that's a serious regular, like, oh, this isn't like a procedural. That guy can get denied. Also, the humanity and their frailty. In the DC comics, they felt like post-World War II, you know, look, our world, we're going to all be okay. Look at all these superheroes we got. I mean, they'll get their problems, but they'll all be fine. Here you're like, this kid who's barely a superhero in a costume mm-hmm. loses his girlfriend, and that's possible, and it's his fault. Right. And that's frail. And now he's a broken human being, just like Tony Stark's a broken human How being. How old were you when you read it? 10. Yeah. Came out in 73. Fuck that guy. Uh, that's <laughs> what I say to that, because the same with Infinity War. Yeah. When Black Panther uh, disintegrates. Here's some spoilers, guys, but it's been a year. It's been a year. Uh, Black Panther disintegrates and Spider-Man disintegrates. Black Panther disintegrates. A guy in front of my friend Lee at the movie theater, just an adult black man. Black Panther disintegrates. That guy, Lee told me, he said, that guy jumped up. He hit the wall. He just walked over to the wall and just leaned against it. And Lee watched him just breathe. He was like... No, fuck it. And the thing is, Black Panther, he's not dead. He's coming back. He's got a three-picture deal. Yeah, sure. He's a comic book hero. Yeah. He's going to be back. He's going to be back. Uh, the other thing is, <laughs> but, they I, killed Spider-Man. There's anecdotal t- children sobbing. I'm like, okay, that's not what this is supposed to be. Yes. Yeah, so there's, I've heard some, there's been some op, there've been some op-eds on the, the, yeah. the torture porn of this. I mean, right, the torture porn of, you want to make Daredevil, where Kingpin, a TV show for an right. adult. Right, I'm okay with it. A little scary for me, but I'm old. I'm, yeah. I was, I was, yeah, I'm an old soul. I would have been okay with any of the older dudes. I would have been, like, I thought Tony Stark was going to go, how many more seasons is, uh, is, uh. He's got to be know, 55, 60 there. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure he's probably like, look, let's, it's been a good run. Let's not make it bad. Let, mm-hmm. let, let's not make the, you know. But the other part of it that was so, um, uh, I mean, you know, it's hard to know what to do with those things, but it almost was this small lesson of 
here's this place that's just where Black Panther and all these people are like, they've got their own conflicts. And you invite a few white people over and the whole thing goes to shit. <laughs> if one guy you invite in and then they all come over. You know, and now we got to help Steve and his friend. And now we're put, we're giving the white guy a, a, a new arm to fight with, which he could turn on us. And now we're, the, our whole thing has been wrecked. Well, Vision, of course, is a synthoid, but um, right. so, uh, right. but of no race. But I see where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not wrong, yeah. Captain America. Martin Freeman help. comes over earlier, and then yeah. you know, and then Captain America's there with he gets his shield from this. A yeah, little bit, like you know, white. And there it is. You see that shield though, the the tiny click, and you're like, what's with the tiny click? Did you? Because yeah. the shield is is it? First of all, it isn't round. I don't approve. Second of all, it has this thing that has a, a the tiniest like exacto knife comes out of the top of it. Yeah, we're like, what's happening? I don't. Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've totally run over, by the way, because we weeded right. off into this. You didn't even get to tell me really about and your childhood. I was obsession. so happy with what we discussed because I I have wanted to discuss this with you since I saw you do stand up, and I know we have the this right. in common. And I also love any discussion where I get to. Talk about Le- girls. And learn. <laughs> and learn. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. no. Like, yeah. This was fascinating, though. It genuinely was. So uh, I have been talking, Rangers, you know, to Greg Barrent. It's at Gregory Barrent on Twitter, and it's at It's Gregors on Instagram. That's right. And um, the podcast is called Maybe It's You. Yeah, Maybe It's You. And uh, it's Amira and I. Yeah, it is with uh, the lovely and talented Amira. Yeah. So thank you so much for doing the show. Yeah. And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?